T. This is Jimmy with the unusual mind. And you know, it was a pleasure having you on the podcast. It was a pleasure being able to talk with you, get a little bit of that old West culture. But I got to ask a question, a request, if you will, for a follow up on a video you did about four months ago on traveling shows in the old West. Yeah, I know you covered all the main attractions, but I'm not a main attractions kind of guy, you dig? No, I got to ask you about the side shows, the gaffes, the freaks, anything that would be unusual that would be going from town to town, you dig? <laughs> So go ahead and give me a follow-up video. I want to hear all about sideshows in the Old West. We can do that. Yeah, we can. Shut up. Freak shows gained popularity in Britain in the 17th century when it became evident that people were fascinated by deformities and abnormalities. In the 19th century West, entertainment of any type was welcomed and a traveling sideshow was both interesting and terrifying. Suffice to say, they were very financially successful. There is a sucker born every minute. P.T. Barnum was one of these. He had a museum in New York that housed many curiosities, both living and dead. It's estimated that 400,000 people a year visited this museum. By putting his show on the road, he could reach thousands more, and money was flowing at some of these boom towns out west. Edouard Boupre, or Boupre the Giant, stood 8 feet 3 inches tall and weighed 375 pounds. Besides his height, he was also known for his strength by bending iron bars and lifting horses. Edouard actually trained to be a cowboy when he was younger, but when on horseback his feet touched the ground. He ended up doing expositions in Canada and the United States, mainly around Montana Territory. Eventually being hired by Barnum & Bailey Circus, Beaupre had a pulmonary hemorrhage and died at the tender age of 23. Now, sideshow acts were not always born different. Sometimes they were manufactured to bring in money. The managers played on people's disabilities or disfigurements and made them attractions. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up and see the two-legged band. Oh, that's very unusual. <laughs> the one legged man! They also manufactured oddities that looked like they could be real, but were not. Like the Fiji mermaid, a mummified specimen which was made with parts of fish and monkeys. Annie Jones, the famous bearded lady, was paid $150 a week for her unusual ability to grow facial hair. That is the equivalent today of about $2,400 a week. She started as a baby in P.T. Barnum's museum in 1865 and as an adult traveled with the company. Another hair growing sensation was Lionel the Lion Face Boy. He had long hair growing over the majority of his body. If I were king of the forest. Oh, there were others that had a variation of this rare condition known as hypertrichosis. Yes, they too made a lot of money. Not only as performers, but in shampoo sales. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Charles Sherwood Stratton, better known as General Tom Thumb, stood at around two feet tall and was quite the entertainer. He was so successful that Charles was made a partner in Barnum Circus. Ella Harper had a condition that made her knees bend backward, giving her an animal-like stance. For comfort, she walked on all fours and was given the moniker Camel Girl. Ella was the star attraction in W.H. Harris's Nickel Plate Circus in the 1880s. Cheng and Ang Bunker, Siamese twins who were joined at the chest, traveled around America doing exhibitions in the 1830s and eventually became businessmen in the southern United States. Yes, these people were exploited for their differences. However, many were shunned from society and carnival life gave them the sense of community they were missing. Some, like Annie Jones, abhorred the word freaks and protested its use. Freak means a radically different person on stage, entertaining with their radical difference. There was even a revolt in 1898 when 40 performers staged a strike demanding that Barnum and Bailey Circus remove the term freak from their shows. These are different and they're interesting to look at and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm powerful and awesome and I have these.
The popularity of the freak show ended in the 1940s. Oftentimes we see sword swallowers or fire breathers filling that spot. But gawking at the abnormal has mainly been driven underground. Apparently, society has replaced that form of entertainment with politics. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. Dan, hey, Dan, Dan come back. back. How are you guys doing? How's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> what, uh... Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what? Don't you think it's kind of a coincidence that everybody's here right now, right before I say my last line? No, just good fortune. Yeah, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna interrupt me? Well, let's not get crazy. Let's see you all. we swing by. <clears throat> just do your line. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Whoa, and we'll see you on down the trail. Good. Good. Right in the trachea. God. <laughs> I think that's the trachea.